Hey guys, here we go into a video about why Anthony Joshua was so successful in his fight against Andy Ruiz. And um, to be honest, this is the same strategy that he used in the first fight. Um, the only difference is, is in this fight, he didn't feel compelled to compete with Deontay Wilder about knockout power and knocking out opponents um, coming off of the heels of the Brazil knockout um, and feeling like he had to keep himself relevant or keep himself that one step, you know, <clears throat> and doing something that he, you know, that's not him. You know, he does get knockouts, but he's not like a one-punch knockout fighter. Uh, Anthony Joshua is a boxer and uh, a very, very good one at that. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, this first clip is of the first round, and it culminates the entire strategy of what um, what Joshua is looking to do. So notice Ruiz on his back foot here, and as he starts transferring his weight to his front foot, immediately Anthony Joshua attacks him. And then when he goes to transfer his weight back, Joshua gives him some control. And then he starts leaning forward onto his front foot, Joshua controls him. And then when he starts leaning on his front foot again, Joshua attacks him with the hook. And then every time... Andy Ruiz comes forward, he's met with some control. Now, some people call this measuring, right? Measuring your range. Um, and those are people that don't know anything about boxing. Um, you're not measuring your range here. If you've ever stood in front of a heavy bag, you know how to land the punch. Landing, a, You've thrown thousands of punches, mil, hundreds of thousands of punches at every range. You know, uh, you know where your range is. But what you're looking to do here is figure out how your opponent is going to react to these probes. These are probes, right? And you use these probes to control the space between you and your opponent. And what Anthony Joshua wants to do here is stop Andy Ruiz from crossing his head over the line and fainting him and opening him up, right? So if you throw a right hand at me and I block the right hand, <clears throat> I did the right thing, right? Or I slipped the right hand. Now, if you throw that same right hand, but you throw it at a feint and you don't finish your weight transition, you don't get all your weight into it, and then you just feint, and then I go to block it, now I'm open for the left hook. And if you feint and throw the left hook, now you just made me, you just punished me for doing the right thing. And that's why you have to have control of the space between you and your opponent uh, so that they cannot feint you and set up their own shots. Now, this is a feint from Joshua. Because this is going to get Andy Ruiz to do things like this, open up on these timings. Um, and that's going to allow him to find times to counterpunch, right? If he, was, if he was prepared here, because Andy Ruiz gets his, his weight all the way onto his front foot, you see here? He, you know he's going to transfer his weight to his back foot, and he does that through the jab here. Um, and I'm going to call this a cross. Anytime you cross your weight from one side of your body to the other and you throw a straight punch, that's a cross. So you can throw a left cross, a right cross. Um, the only time it's really a jab, um, like a real jab, is if you're in the back position, if your weight is on the back foot and you throw the front hand. Um, you're not really getting your weight into it. A lot of people step with that punch um, from the back foot. Um, it's really, really, really dangerous to do that. But um, as you can see, um, Anthony Joshua doing a good job of controlling. And what he wants to do with these hooks here is when Andy Ruiz gets on the front foot, he wants to attack him with the hook because that's the position that you attack with your left hook. And he wants to stop Andy Ruiz from getting on the front foot, not only so that he can't set up his punches, but so that he can't throw punches like this. Because if he can't get his weight to the front foot and he doesn't feel comfortable, he's not going to feel comfortable throwing crosses like this that he's very easily able to hide. Um, and we're going to see Anthony Joshua do very similar stuff too. But again, continuing round one, controlling him every time Andy Ruiz moves, right? And look at how he's able to pop him with this jab as Andy Ruiz crosses his head from one side of the line to the other. This is how you're supposed to use your jab. This is how you're supposed to attack your opponent. So he uses his lead hand to control him, control him, and then as soon as he uses his weight transfer and transfers his weight from his back foot to his front foot, and Andy Ruiz is not using any type of control, he's not fainting, he's only reacting to Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua lets up the pressure just for a second, Andy Ruiz feels comfortable to cross his head from one side to the other and gets popped with the jab. Now look at all the motion that he has to make after. Even after getting hit with that shot, he knows a right hand might come, so he has to slip the right hand. Spoiler alert, he's not doing a good job. This is not the position that you slip a right hand in. This is the position you get punched with a right hand in. Um, <clears throat> ask Sergei Lipinets. 
But um, Anthony Joshua doing a good job, again, of continuing to control him and block his weight transfers. And then when he gets on the front foot, right, attack him with the left hook. Stop him from feeling comfortable getting onto the front foot and attacking you. Uh, so that you can keep him on the back foot and have so much of the ring opened up to you. Because if, An if Andy Ruiz is stuck on the back foot, he's not going to be able to cut the ring off because he'll never be able to transfer his weight to his front foot. And again, this is exactly what happens when you're controlling your opponent. You're asking them questions. Again, front foot, front foot, front foot. And then, rather than continuing this, right, and allowing Andy Ruiz to make adjustments... He's able to use this punch and this control to create a pattern for Andy Ruiz to feel comfortable in and then break that pattern once he knows how Andy Ruiz is going to react. Again, Andy Ruiz not reacting, touching his glove, trying to create space himself, and then he just attacks him. And this is exactly how you set your punches up. This is why you're not measuring your range. Again, you know your range. You're looking to control the space between you and your opponent and figure out where your opponent's head is going to be after you set that shot up, after you feint them, after you give them this probe, right? You want to know where their head is going to be so the next time that you transition your weight, you can attack them. Now, Andy Ruiz is refusing to compromise his position here, but he's also not moving his head, right? So Andy, Anthony Joshua is able to attack him because of the fact that he knows where Andy Ruiz's head is going to be. And that's what you want to be doing with your probes, right? Gathering information. Ask your opponent a question. And in this case, he says, hey, what do you think about this? And Andy Ruiz says, that ain't shit. And then Andy Ruiz just, Anthony Joshua just says, okay, well, how about I just attack you with it then? Because again, this is the same motion, right? Watch Anthony Joshua back foot front foot, back foot, front foot, back foot, front foot. And then he's able to seamlessly transfer the control into an attack. And this makes Andy Ruiz much more hesitant to come forward, much more hesitant to attack. And again, the same, the same thing here, right? Andy Ruiz is able to turn it around on Anthony Joshua right here by having that pattern that An Anthony Joshua has set up and finding a way to attack him to the body. Actually, I think he throws that shot to the head, right? But he's able to use the same exact tactic that Anthony Joshua is using because, because Anthony Joshua is looking to control the space, but all Andy Ruiz has to do is create that pattern and be the first one to break it to set up a shot. Now, because Anthony Joshua is controlling him, controlling him, by the time he's able to set that shot up and throw that right hand, Anthony Joshua is already out of the way because of the fact that he knows he doesn't have to worry about the lead hand because he's controlling the lead hand. Because he has control of it, he knows that he only has to wait for the weight transition from Andy Ruiz and uh, react accordingly. So this could have been a great opportunity for him to throw his own overhand right, to counter him, or to slip and then counter with the left hook. Granted, you don't want to be on the line with Andy Ruiz. He's very fast. But it's the exact same thing. And then Anthony Joshua is able to do the same thing to him, right? Control him with the lead hand. He knows he's going to bring his lead hand out like this, just like he did in the last clip. Um, and instead of using a jab, Andy, Anthony Joshua throws a right hand over the top. And again, all because he has control of the space between him and Andy Ruiz. Because he's using his probe, because he's using this as a feint, he's using this to gauge the reactions of Andy Ruiz, he's able to set this shot up really easily. So while, and Anthony, jo while Andy Ruiz thinks he's just going to touch gloves, Anthony Joshua is taking that full step, transferring all of his weight, and landing a savage right hand on Andy Ruiz that buckled him and almost dropped him. Now, the fight continues to play out in this manner, and you can see as the fight goes on that the more that Andy Ruiz gets stuck on his back foot, and as you see here, right, back foot, fainting him, back foot, Anthony, Andy Ruiz tries to get to the front foot so he can start using his left hook and start using his left cross and use that jab that he has that's so good, but because Anthony Joshua is constantly controlling him and fainting him, he's able to circle around and get away from him at ease because of the fact that Anthony, <clears throat> Anthony Joshua is constantly threatening the position that Andy Ruiz is in. Again, Anthony Joshua has all the control of the space between him and Andy Ruiz. And when he winds up losing that control, when, Anthony, when Andy Ruiz does this and faints him and starts fainting him and trying to set shots up, Anthony Joshua says, oh, I'm not in control of this engagement. Let me just get off the line 
and then I'll reset and I'll start controlling him again from the outside. I'll pick a new opportunity to engage. <clears throat> so that's what he does. And he goes back to this, fainting, shifting his weight, controlling him, right? And every time he's on that front foot, right, putting the lead hand out there, asking Ruiz a question, hey, hey, what do you think about this? And finding ways with this rhythm and this timing, right, to control Ruiz, ask him what he thinks about everything, and then stick him with the shot, right? Again, perfect, beautiful boxing, consistently controlling Andy Ruiz, keeping Andy Ruiz off of the front foot, and not allowing Andy Ruiz to set his punches up. And if you don't set your punches up against a professional fighter, you're either going to get knocked out or you're going to miss them all. Now, this clip is really important here as you see Andy Ruiz getting stuck on the back foot from the lead hand, right? And as he's getting stuck on the back foot here, here, control, control, notice his weight is on the right side, right? Even though Anthony Joshua is circling to the left, Andy Ruiz has no opportunity to get his weight on his left foot because he's scared of getting caught. He's scared of getting hit with the shot here uh, because Anthony Joshua has such control over him. Now, that clip didn't go on as long as I thought it should right there, but... Uh, and then we have Anthony Joshua again. Look at how he feints him, faint, 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 and then he gets to the outside, and then he transfers his weight back through this jab, right? Using these motions, this head movement, to constantly slip and threaten and Andy Ruiz's position, right? And set up punches. Now, this motion right here is very, very, very important. See how he controls him with the lead hand, and then he gets to the outside, and he comes back with this cross, and then he transfers his weight around himself, right? He pivots on the front foot and shoots this jab. This is a very, very, very common boxing maneuver. Um, and if you're a fighter yourself, you should be practicing this. Shift your weight to your front foot, use a cross, hit the bag, and then turn out, right? But you're only pivoting on the front foot. Now, there are a few rules to this, and I'll be doing a Patreon video within the next week talking about them and teaching you guys how to do this, make this motion really simple. But this little motion right here is so integral to being a good fighter um, um, that it should be one of the things that you practice every single day. It is just a staple. Um, it's just great boxing. And Anthony Joshua shows that motion here. And I'll show it a little, I'll show it a little bit more, but notice how he transfers his weight front foot back foot, right? Boom. As he takes that last step, that's going to be very important in, for the last clip that I show. Um, so remember that motion. But again, every time Andy Ruiz gets on the front foot, Anthony Joshua attacks him. So back foot, front foot, back foot, front foot, and then Anthony Joshua attacks him. Again, he doesn't want Andy Ruiz to feel comfortable being on the front foot because that's when, when Andy Ruiz has the most amount of punches coming forward available to him to attack him. So again, every time, Anthony, Anthony, or every time Andy Ruiz gets on the front foot, he's getting fainted, he's getting jabbed at, right? Or that hook is coming, right? Or this shot right here, this beautiful jab, right? So Andy, Anthony Joshua gets on the front foot here, and then boom, hits him with that jab and then transfers his weight to the back foot. Now, um... Anthony Joshua could work on this a little bit. I'm not a big fan of taking, see how he took the step and his foot is landing with the ball of his foot first. I like landing with my heel or stepping with my heel first and then transferring my weight to my front foot and then hitting him with the jab. And then as you strike with the jab, you're on the ball of your foot and then you use the rest of your weight transition to move off the line. Again, I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in the Patreon video. I'll teach you the flow of it. It feels weird as hell when you do it in real life. But I promise you, it's going to make you so elusive with your jab. It's such a great technique. But um, again, moving on. A few more clips. I got five more clips, I think. Four more clips. So again, Andy Ruiz trying to get to the front foot, right? Now we're in round three. And look at how he's on the back foot now. Look at how he's coming forward. He doesn't even have the courage to get all the way on the front foot because he's been attacked with so many jabs, so many hooks. And now he's completely on the back foot. He makes like a little bit of a motion here, right? Right here right? But he's having a very hard time getting on that front foot, finding a way to attack Anthony Joshua, right? So he can throw this same cross, right? Now, this, notice, this motion is the same one that Anthony Joshua is catching him with, right? Front foot, and then boom, to the back foot, right? 
that clip gets a little cut off. But that's exactly what he wants to do. Get your weight to the front foot so you can throw a really hard jab um, or cross uh, to get to back to the back foot and get back to safety and get out of range. But again, Andy Ruiz, look at how he's stuck on the back foot. He has Anthony Joshua on the ropes here, but he's not able to make anything happen because Andy Ruiz is stuck in the back foot. He's, he's stuck on the back foot, and he cannot get his weight to the front foot, so he has no way to threaten Anthony Joshua's position. So he has no way to get Anthony Joshua out of position so that he can set up a shot. Again, because he's using his lead hand to control the space, right? He's controlling the space. He's asking Andy Ruiz questions, and Andy Ruiz has to answer all these questions perfectly Otherwise, he's going to get hit in the head with another big right hand like he did from the first round. And because of that, Andy Ruiz has no opportunity to cut the ring off. Look at how he keeps circling to the right. Because he's circling to the right here and just eating up the clock, Andy Ruiz has no opportunity without his left hand to land any effective punches against him um, because he can't get to the front foot. And Anthony Joshua can continue just circling around him and keeping him on the back foot. Brilliant game plan from Anthony Joshua. Now, there is more that Anthony Joshua could have done. Again, Andy, Andy Ruiz coming forward, and Anthony Joshua control, control, control. And then when he finds an opportunity, he catches him, right? As Anthony, as Anthony Joshua, um, or as Andy Ruiz is coming forward. But notice, he's only fighting on the back foot. Even when he takes that step and he comes forward, he's still stuck with all his weight in one position. And that makes these jabs hit so hard. Now, I don't like the fact that Anthony Joshua has to take a step because he's attacking um, he's attacking Andy Ruiz when he's on the back foot, so there's much more distance, right? He should be fainting and throwing the right hand over the top because he'll cover much more distance with that shot. But again, he's doing a great job of using his lead hand and controlling Andy Ruiz, figuring out where Andy Ruiz's head is going to be when he probes and then attacking him where his head is going to be. Because now that he has complete control over Andy Ruiz and it's only the third round, Andy Ruiz is, you know, he's basically a fish out of, a, you know, a monkey in a barrel or whatever you want to say. A fish out of water? I don't know. But he has no opportunity to really attack Anthony Joshua. And because of that, Anthony Joshua can tee off when he wants to, right? He could have done much more of this in the fight. Um, and this is why, you know, he's not like a great fighter yet. Because he has this glaring, weak, like, he's created this glaring weakness in Andy Ruiz by controlling him, getting the fight out of one position, limiting all of Andy Ruiz's offense, but he's not able to take advantage of it, right? Now, this is the criticism that Mayweather undergone, had undergone during his career. And this is the reason why people say that Mayweather's not the best ever, right? Really, really hardcore boxing fans. You know, I, I don't want to say, like, I want to create like a, let's see, so anyone who grew up with, you know, Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Roberta Duran, Thomas Hearns, you know, Iron Barkley, like, you know, I'll just say anybody, right, or Mike Tyson, or like, you know, Muhammad Ali, anybody from a previous generation, right, I'm talking someone in their 40s, their 50s, um, uh, people who have seen those kinds of fighters. They're from a different generation. That was their heyday, right? And they're going to be, I don't want to say like they're much less impartial, right? But the way that they think about boxing, those are going to be the people that are most critical of Mayweather, right? Whereas my generation, I grew up on Mayweather. You know, when I was watching him grow up, I couldn't imagine a fighter being better than Mayweather. I couldn't imagine it. Um... Until I started, you know, getting deeper into boxing, really learning about fighting, training, you know, much more hardcore than I was. Um, and I stopped, I don't want to say like being mean, you know, but being a casual. But, but it was this kind of strategy, right, that Mayweather was, an, was excellent at. He could completely nullify a fighter's offense, fainting them, probing them. And he was so quick and he could use his shoulders. He could do those weight transitions, the slip left, slip right, and then shoot punches off of them. He was so fast. He was so talented. But there was a point where he would stop putting on the gas, right? He didn't do it in the Mosley fight. He wanted to put it on Mosley, right? So he did a good job in that fight. And that was a massive fight. That was such a good fight. But fights like um, the Maidana fight, um, you know, 
the Birdo fight. There's so much moving around and not not able to maintain as much control over those fighters. And it's those kinds of fights where where he doesn't go for the knockout and he doesn't try to stop those guys that stops people from seeing him for being as good as he is, right? Because we all see that, oh, he could have done more. He could have done more, right? And in this case, in Anthony Joshua's case, he could have done more. He had complete control over Andy Ruiz. He could have gotten the knockout. Granted, he got knocked out in his last fight. Um, so if this was the first fight, I would say that Anthony Joshua made a mistake. He should have put a little bit more pressure on. Once he recognized that Andy Ruiz was stuck in position two and couldn't get to position one, um, and I'm going to be making a video about that too. If you guys want to check out my Patreon, I have some uh, training videos in there, some uh, drills for you to work on about weight transitions and the importance of them. Um, you should work on weight transitions every single day, you guys, if you're a real fighter. Um, it's the key to like every motion in boxing. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, after exposing your opponent to being fighting at a one position, you have a massive advantage because they have only half as many punches available to them. And it creates a massive opportunity for you to really land big punches and force your opponent into positions in which they're not ready to defend, right? Anyway, um, that's all I wanted to say about that part. Um, but again, Anthony Joshua doing a great job of controlling Andy Ruiz throughout the course of the fight. Um, and because he has such great control, I'm gonna, I want to play this clip. So watch this. Anthony Joshua is going to slip to the outside here. And watch how Andy Ruiz has to react, right? And then he feints him here. And then he starts moving this way. And now moving this way. And Andy Ruiz has to continue to react to him. Now notice this motion here. This is the really exciting one. See how he has to control or see how he has to slip to the outside? Andy Ruiz thinks a jab is coming here. So Andy, Anthony Joshua is going to take that step here. And because of the fact that this is the same motion that you use after you take that step to cross your weight from front to back, Andy Ruiz thinks he's being threatened right here. He thinks Anthony Joshua is going to shoot a jab. So he has to move off the line. So that motion, if I can find that same clip again. I'm not sure which one it was in. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Might be in this one. Let's see. No, not in this one. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But because he's able to use that motion, take on the front foot and then transfer his weight to the back foot through the jab. Oh, it's this one right here. Boom. Because of that, because of that motion as he's on the ropes and he's slipping and transferring his weight, he's able to create pockets later on in the fight where he can threaten his opponent for free. For free, right? There's no effort in this, right? He's just slipping, and then he just takes a step, right? Takes a step, and he's able to threaten Andy Ruiz's position and make him feel unsafe, right? And this is all due to body mechanics. If you can move and use your body in the proper ways with the slips and the feints and the, and the weight transitions, you can constantly be threatening your opponent's position and stop them not only from setting punches up against you, but stop them from being able to properly defend themselves. Because if you notice in this position, when he slips this way, boom, he's open for another shot, right? Because Anthony Andy Ruiz's hands jut out right here, he's open for an overhand right. So the next time that Anthony Joshua does this motion, maybe he takes that step, feints the jab, gets Andy Ruiz to slip that way, and throws an overhand right, right into Andy Ruiz's nose, and just smashes it. He'd probably knock him out. Or if he takes this step here, faints him, he can come back with the left hook. And because of the fact that Andy Ruiz has already slipped, he's already on the outside as far as he can get, he has nowhere to go. So if he's not prepared to transfer his weight from his front foot to his back foot or pivot off the line, he's just going to get cracked with a big left hook, right? Now, that's the beauty of this strategy of having an, not only having an active guard, and I haven't mentioned that in this video at all, right? The constant probing and fainting and slipping and moving um, that you can see at the beginning of the clip, having an active guard, right? Fainting, transitioning your weight, not keeping your head in the same spot. But once your opponent gets used to the first layer of your offense, right? The slip, just putting yourself into perfect position to land a shot, it's going to open up 
open them up to the second layer where you can faint off the first layer and then start landing shots on the second layer. But because you're fainting, you can set your shots up much better for power and, and weight transitions. And I'll be doing a video on that for my Patreon as well, um, talking about the ways to faint um, and to set up shots. Um, I have some really cool stuff going on. Um, I've just... Uh, the guy that I've been training in the mornings, he got a new job and his schedule's kind of a little rough. Um, and we're kind of trying to figure some things out, but um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to train him just because the scheduling thing is really rough on us. Um, so I'll have to be using videos uh, and showing it myself, um, which means that I might not have anybody to demo it with, uh, which, is a, which is a drag, you know. But um, maybe I'll still be able to do a good job and show you guys. But anyway... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in the training videos, um, it's going to be an ongoing series about how to become a fighter. If you guys have any questions in the in the Patreon, um, if you guys donate, you know I'm gonna you know I can start doing things where you can donate some money, and I'll make a video on my Patreon just for you. Um, I don't know how much it, you know it should be, whatever. But if you guys have any ideas, um, I want to answer questions. Um, oh, I can do a, a demo where I go over all the questions and answer your questions in video format. Maybe I can do that every, uh, you know, once a month or twice a month um, for patrons only. But it's only ten bucks a month. Um, I, you know, I do a lot of dissecting of boxing and teaching of boxing on there. Um, and I really want to do some high level stuff and get into coaching and and really teach people how to how to fight. You know. So anyway, check out my Patreon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks guys.